the notion that the United States is a country to be pitied, it, it just never entered my thought process. The U.S. is feared by many. The U.S. is respected by many, you know, hated, loved, but pitied was just never part of the process. And between, you know, the, the, the civil disruption uh, and particularly the U.S. response to COVID-19, because the reality is the world now has a pretty good idea of what is needed to respond to this pandemic. We've seen it in Europe with remarkable success. We've seen it in Asia with remarkable success in terms of Japan, Taiwan, Korea, Vietnam, you know, almost every country. There are countries that are going to really struggle with it. Philippines has had a hard time. Indonesia is going to have a hard time, as will India. But, but again, I'm not sure that those were countries that you would normally mention as, as, as comparators to the United States in terms of its capacity to respond to something like this. So there is an element in every one of those countries of bewilderment, of confusion, of concern, of pity about the United States. Um, uh, um, I will say that in the coming four months, uh, going back to your previous question of, of how does the Trump campaign position itself, it's pretty clear that their desired framing of this issue is to blame everything on China and then to cast Joe Biden not just as a tool of the left, but as a tool of China and as weak on China. Uh, thus far, they've not been very effective in that casting because the Biden campaign has come out with some remarkably strong statements on China. And the underlying you know, response is that, you know, despite rhetoric, uh, you know, and, and Trump has been really great in his rhetoric against China, as has the Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. And, and again, the Vice President gave a remarkable streak on human rights on China, which is particularly salient this week when you're dealing with the new national security law in, in Hong Kong, et cetera. But despite the rhetoric, right, in terms of actions by a divisive approach to alliances, by withdrawing from the Trans-Pacific Partnership, by, you know, undermining the rules-based order that Australia so relies upon, you know, in many respects, this administration has been a tremendous gift to China. And that seems to be the message from the Biden campaign, that we will have a real policy towards China and we'll work with allies and will work with the international system. Uh, so that recognition seems to be playing out in the countries in the region. But again, it depends on the country, it depends on where they're at. Most countries in the region, like Australia, are largely consumed with their own fights, both the pandemic and the economic response.